all right guys welcome back to this session and here we're going to talk about um getting financial data right we already discussed how uh reinforcement learning works and now we want to look at a practical aspect right but before uh doing a practical uh, session we need to know what what some of the things that we need and one of the most important things we need is data so i'm going to discuss first how we can get the data where we can get the data there are so many data sources and it's important to know a, a, a site or a, a source that is uh, is trustworthy that provides uh, data that we can trust so in this uh, we're going to look at a, a couple of things first we'll look at different data sources right and then we'll look at what type of data we need to get right so uh, financial data features so if we want to get data what features should we get we should get the the open price the low price the high price the the close price the the trading volume the market capitalization the sector some things like that so for every day we want to get the different prices so those are the features and then we'll look at um how we can extract the data so depending on uh on where you are extracting the data from the apis are different and the usage is different and so we're going to look at how to use it, uh, those different apis how to define an asset pair and how to extract and store the data so and then we'll look at so when you extract the data you you, you need to check if the data is clean right if it uh, has a high fidelity so because good data equals to a, a good model and good information all right so let's begin let's look at the data sources one of the most popular data sources is uh, Yahoo Finance right so this is a site that provides uh, uh, data for different uh, assets be it digital stocks and all that so we're going to look at Yahoo uh, Finance and we're going to look at Alpaca. Alpaca actually it 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 can help you to backtest your models. That's what um, I I observed is good for. So Alpha Vantage is another source, right? And then we also have IES uh, Cloud. This is a very powerful site and it provides very extensive data for uh, both sentiment and uh, uh economic reports and, and 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 filings right so it provides very extensive data and so let's look at uh, what the different data sources provide right so we'll look at uh, you can see here we have a data source the timeline is just like uh the data it provides what time does it start from and then does it provide daily data what format can we get the data in and does it provide streaming data do you need to register and what is the data fidelity so this is my personal evaluation after using the sites right so how how good is the data from the site right so yahoo finance uh the data actually it depends on your asset but for digital assets it starts from 2014 we know digital assets are very it's a young uh uh asset class so it's a pretty new asset class so it starts in 2014 and it provides uh daily access you can download in csv or you can use the api and uh streaming you can get streaming data from there you don't need to register and the fidelity is moderate i think it's moderate that's my own evaluation and investment.com actually their api is broken right and you can download directly from the site in csv but you need to do some manual some pre-processing because the api is broken and you don't need registration and the fidelity is also moderate i would say and then alpaca uh actually this site the timeline it depends on when you're crawling it because it uh, if you're crawling for daily data maybe it, it just gives you the last 1000 data points so if you're crawling for uh, 
minute level data, it gives you the last 1000 data points and it requires an API. I think the, 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 uh, if you, if you, if you want to get daily data, maybe it doesn't require an API, but if you want to get like extensive data, you need to pay for it. Right. And registration is optional and the fidelity, I tried it and, uh, sometimes uh, it gives me really like some, some uh, data columns are really blank. I don't know why. So I, I rated it as low and then IEX cloud, uh, it starts from like the this is the same like alpaca they have a paid version where you can get like all the historic data so it depends on your payment right they require an api the fidelity is very high right so this is a specialized uh, system if you really want to do high level uh finance you should probably check this out right and uh alpha vantage also this is similar to alpaca depends on your you have to register and it depends on your package so and then uh, the fidelity i think is high from my experiments yeah so this is what i can say about this data sources so let's look at um the data features that when we want to get right so in finance uh the data features that when we are downloading data we have to define we have to know what what kind of information do we want to get, right? So the basic features are, this stands for the open price, the high price, the, the, the low price, the close price, and the trading volume, right? Let's look at what those mean, right? So if you're getting uh, data for an asset on a daily basis, so every day, you know, at what price it opened, that the price at which that asset started with, right, on that day. And then we have the high, which is the highest price of that asset for that day. And then we have the low, we have the lowest price for that asset for that day. We have uh, the close, which is at the end of the day, what was the price of that asset, right? And then we have the volume, which is the unit price at which uh, those assets were, that asset was traded for that day. And then uh, we can have like, how can we represent this? Uh, normally, if you see financial charts, you see something like this, right? So the green just usually tells you that um, this asset went up for that day. And the red usually tells you that this asset went down for that day. And we can see this is the high price and we can see that uh, for the green you can see the close is up because the the it opened low and closed up but for the red it opened high and closed low so that's why um, we can see the difference open and close and then this is an example of how your data will look like when you finally get it so you have a date, this is a day, and then we have the open price, the high, the low, the close price. We can see that the, 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 the high price will always be higher than the open, low, closed, right? And we know that the low price will always be lower or could equal to any of this, will always be the lowest, right? And the close price could be anywhere in between, right? And the open price could be anywhere in between, right? And then, so let's look at, uh, let's try to explain the features a little more, right? So when you look at a, a financial chart, you, you're going to see the features. We have a timeline, right? And then we're going to see the symbols, right? So what do these symbols mean? Like we already explained, we have a high and we have a low. And if it's, uh, if it's uh, bullish, bullish just means that the price went up for that day. It, then you will see that this is the open price and this is the close price. And if it's bearish, then this is the close price and this is the open price. So bearish just means the open price was higher than the close price. And bullish means the open price was lower than the close price. It means the asset went up for that day. So usually you will see a chart, right? 
you will see so this uh, this chart this is from this site you can check it out and so usually you will see a, a financial chart like this so when you see the green and the red and so you can read the chart like uh, this was the high this was the low and this was um, this was the, the close this was the open and this was the close right so you can read it uh, the financial chart like this and so moving forward let's look at we're going to use different sources to get data right one of the sources is uh, like we already mentioned is uh, Yahoo Finance right so we want to get uh, data for digital assets right we're going to get data for some for the top 10 digital assets and we can see the digital assets uh, in March, these are the top 21 digital assets, right? So we want to get the data for some of these digital assets. And then we're going to use the Yahoo Finance API to get the historical data, right? And we're going to use Python to do that. And so uh, there's a Python uh, package that you can use to crawl data from Yahoo Finance. So that's pretty easy. That makes it easy for us. And then we're going to store this data in a CSV file so that we can use it for our experiments, right? So we're going to put that data into CSV format. So comma separated values, right? And so let's um, look at what kind of, uh, how do we use Yahoo Finance, right? So to use Yahoo Finance, you need to declare your assets in this form, right? So you can see BTC hyphen USD. So this is the pair that you want to get. So we define it in this format, ETH USD. So we define all the pairs in this form. And then we're going to uh, give our start data, end date, and our interval. So we want to get from 2010 to 23. To 2023 so if we if we give it 2010 and there's no data for 2010 it's going to uh, start at a day that uh, higher than 2010 right from where the data was available and the interval is one day so you define it like this and then from there we're going to use the Yahoo Finance package which we import as YF and then we're just going to download we give a coin start date this is how you use the function right we're going to look at that in the practical session i'm just giving an overview right now and then you're going to get your data that looks something like this right so you can see here we have the date the open the high the low the close the adjusted close the volume and a column for the asset right so it's going to look something like this and for every asset that we get we're going to look at the, the minimum date, and so the date range from which the asset was gotten, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And then we're going to use Alpha Vantage. It has a different usage. So the way the API, so all of this, the APIs are quite different. So you have to know how, to, so depending on which one you use, you have to look at how to use the API. Right, so if you're using Alpha Vantage, it's going to look something like this. We're going to look. I I, I will prove. I will uh, do a, um, a practical session where we use all of this uh, data sources. So you have to define like a function. So you're getting digital currency, the daily, and it's going to be you're going to get from BTC to to USD. So depending on which pair, you can put it here. And then you're going to use a URL to define. So you define your market, right? So it's a digital currency daily from what currency to which currency. And you're going to provide your API key, right? And then you're going to download the data. We'll look at these details in the practical part. And so you get your data like this. So you can see the data is quite, uh, the columns might be named differently. So this one provides the market capitalization for every asset, right? For every day. So, and then uh, we have also Alpaca. You can see for Alpaca, the way the digital assets are defined is also different, right? So the pair is the, you define is that AVE and USDT. So these are the assets you want to get. So the way you define them is quite different. So depending on the API you're using, 
uh, you define it differently. So this is the request. We're going to send a request. We're going to say crypto bar request, and we're going to symbols that we're going to use will be the indicators that we've provided here. And then the timeline, we're going to give a time frame to be a day. Start date, we're going to give a start date and an end date, right? And then we are going to download the data. So we're going to look at how we do this practically. So this is just um, a presentation to show you the data sources, right? And then we have IEX Cloud. IEX Cloud is quite extensive and the learning curve is quite steep. So I didn't cover, I won't cover the details here, but if you want to check it out, this is one of the most powerful sites to get uh, financial data. And so, um, we're going to look at this uh, in more detail in a specialized uh, uh, practical session. And so when you get your data, you want to pre-process. So when you get your data, please try to verify the fidelity. How good is the data, right? So you try to look at uh, some evaluation methods. So ensure that the quality of the data is good, right? You can compare it with other data sources, or you can just check to see that the data you get uh, is continuous like is like for it gets the data uh, in a time series manner like every day right it doesn't skip some days and then you should know that good data means good information so if you have good, a good information it means your your model is getting good information and so you get a good model right so this is why we need to ensure that our data is 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 good right so we know that a model is as good as the data it is trained on, right? So uh, this is the first session. This is just an overview of what data we want to get to use for our, uh, a reinforcement learning session. So in the next session, I'm going to give you uh, the practical session of how to go about getting this data. See you in the next video.